Nanotechnology has been a staple of pulp science fiction for decades now. Wow, I can actually say this as I've consumed three decades worth of science fiction. What have I been doing with my life? But despite the fact that everyday devices like cell phones, which were the size of Arnold Schwarzenegger's forearm once upon a time, computers that filled entire rooms when they first debuted, all manner of other devices like calculators, clocks, and even something like a Walkman or a CD player, what do you mean you don't know what those things are, have gotten so small that they all fit neatly into the palm of your hand. Nanomachines have remained out of reach. At least, that is, until now. Today we'll be diving into the first robots made out of DNA and answering why these little buggers might be able to help prevent future pandemics before they even get started. But first, be sure to hit that like button, comment your favorite sci-fi movie or show featuring nanites, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of the Neo Rackham series, which has enough nano machines and neon to satisfy any sci-fi nerd's appetite, and this is Science Get. While science fiction authors have dreamed of all the applications and horrors that would come with nano-sized machines, scientists have been hard at work attempting to make such a concept work in the real world, with little success. That was until those geniuses at Caltech, a place I visited often as a kid, announced that they had constructed the first prototype for a robot made from DNA. When interviewed by Popular Mechanics, Caltech researcher Liu Qian had this to say about the prototype. Just like electromechanical robots are sent off to faraway places like Mars, we would like to send molecular robots to minuscule places where humans can't go, such as the bloodstream. Our goal was to design and build a molecular robot that could perform a sophisticated nanomechanical task, cargo sorting. Now, before we continue on to how these DNA robots were made, I just have to point something out. While I'm sure that the fine folks at Caltech have the most altruistic intentions for this technology, let's let the concept of microscopic machines capable of getting into your bloodstream sink in for a second. I'm sure there's no organization or um, government on Earth that would find a way to weaponize such a machine, right? Right? These DNA robots were built using three core components, DNA proteins to make up the legs, two proteins to make up the feet of the machine, and a sensor that's supposed to give the arm commands to either grab or let things go. That's it. They're incredibly simple. The leg allows the robot to move, and connected to it are two feet that are able to attach to special surfaces. Only one of these feet can be attached to a surface at the same time, but the robot is programmed to lift the other foot, as soon as the other one makes contact with the surface, giving it a kind of walk cycle. What I wouldn't give to see one of these things in action. With these three pieces, these robots are able to perform all kinds of important tasks. So what did the researchers at Caltech have the first ever nano machine do for its first proverbial outing? Did they cure someone's cancer? Unclog a precariously positioned blood clot or ooh, Ooh, maybe increase the blood and neurotransmitter output in a flat earther's brain. Nope, they use them to sort packets of colored dye. Okay, so as a first outing, this test isn't all that exciting. But all kidding aside, it proves that the robot works and is capable of sorting molecules, which is probably what most operations would basically amount to. With how small these nanomachines are, hundreds if not thousands of them could work on the same operation parallel to one another. Which, again, no one on Earth is going to weaponize, right? No one would ever do such a heinous thing, right? Which brings us to some rampant and probably unwarranted speculation. I think the computer likes me again. It hasn't been threatening to turn off my air nearly as much. Cue the title card. While it probably doesn't take much to imagine how nanomachines like these could be used to cause harm, let's go ahead and instill a whole new level of existential dread into my loyal science get viewers. Just as these robots are fully capable of sorting molecules, these processes could be used to tear down important systems or horrifyingly, horrifyingly, 
potentially create blockages like blood clots that could effectively engineer strokes in a dictatorship's political opponents. What? I'm a horror and science fiction author. Did you expect this to be sunshine and rainbows? Additionally, it's possible these machines could be engineered to deliver harmful viruses or radioactive isotopes to a person's system, placing them in key areas to ensure a quick and grisly end. Remember that episode of Black Mirror with the drone bees? Imagine if you couldn't see the bees or track them. You're welcome. All this is to say, if these machines fell into the wrong hands, they could just as easily be twisted from their original purpose to create a wholly new form of biological warfare, because they're made of DNA. Get it? But enough about the doom and gloom. 19 days in and 2021 has already given us more than enough of that. Let's talk about some of the good these things could do. So Caltech aren't the only ones who have been working on nanomachines. China's National Center for Nanoscience and Technology, NCNT, and Arizona State University announced that they'd successfully created robots just a few nanometers across. When these robots were injected into the bloodstream of lab mice, they were able to shrink tumors. Okay, I'd say that a cure for cancer would be a good balancing factor to a potential bioweapon, wouldn't you? These particular nanobots were made from DNA that had been rolled into sheets containing a type of blood clotting agent. Researchers positioned a small DNA molecule that naturally binds to tumors on the outside of the robot so that when they reached the tumor, the DNA would unravel and the drug would be released. But that's not all. Nanotechnology is being used in other ways that sadly don't rely on constructing nanomachines out of DNA. SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, is just one of many coronaviruses. Currently, researchers are testing a nanoparticle immunization system that could effectively immunize humans to a variety of different variants of these viruses before they can even make the jump from bat to human. It works by selecting RBDs from at least eight types of coronaviruses and fitting them around a nanoparticle like a mosaic. The result in lab mice is that they develop a cross-reactive antibody response that basically create antibodies for all eight types of coronavirus. Pretty cool, right? So while nanoscale machines still might have a bit of time to go before they're fully realized, these prototype tests prove that the concept is workable and that it's only a matter of time before they become an extremely expensive option for rich people. What? Too pessimistic? If you dug this video, be sure to drop me a like and comment your worst nightmares involving nanobots. Or your greatest hope, you know, whatever floats your nano boat. And be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss an episode of ScienceGet. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.